Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to do a comparison video of the, uh, the Garmin 645 wristwatch, uh, the Garmin Vivo Smart wristwatch and the Garmin HRM chest strap. So we'll be looking at comparing um, all of the, the, the heart rate data um, and the reason why it's important for me is that generally I don't like wearing the, the heart rate straps although this one, the, uh, the Garmin one's relatively quite comfortable um, but if I can get away without wearing it and get good heart rate data then I'm quite happy just to, to use the watch. So, so what I did recently was to do a interval training session my heart rate would have been gone from a steady jog pace right up to quite high near not not maximum heart rate but quite close to maximum heart rate um, so I'll be putting the uh, putting through the, putting the devices through through its paces um, so generally when I when I run normally I wear the uh, the Vivo smart watch which is which is this one here and the Garmin 645 watch which which is here um, and I've, I've used these on my left right, left wrist for about a year um, and I haven't had any major problems with them and I would say probably through the year maybe I'd somewhere between three and six times where the data hasn't correlated but pretty much within one or two beats um, these two watches are pretty much identical usually the, the data I get from these is the same very rarely are there, are there anything different um, but there are days where, where they drift off like when, when I did the uh, the London Marathon virtual run, and the the data on that on the heart rate was uh, on one watch on the actual it's actually on the Garmin one actually was uh, was running up up at two hundred beats for you know three or four hours which is ridiculous, um, but obviously by the time I was in the run I wasn't going to bother stop um, and reset that because I was uh, I was racing against the clock so I had no time for that so for that day I wasn't really bothered about heart data and just regarded the results that I got. Uh, but generally other than that it's, it's really really good so um yeah so what, what i've actually done is managed to record the, the 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 heart rate data to the strava app on my mobile phone so we'll be able to have a look at that data and the garmin watch records it to itself and that's been then uploaded to to garmin and strava and the uh, vivo smart has been recorded on itself and that has been uploaded to Garmin. Um, okay, so let's have, let's have a look at the data. So the first, so the first trace that we're looking at is the is of the, the heart rate monitor. Um, so that, like I said before, this was recorded on Strava. Um, direct from the heart rate monitor so it wasn't going through any of the watches so the blue trace there you can see is the the pace trace so the pace is varying from at the very lowest 637 minutes per kilometer and at the highest pace it was up at around about uh, 320 minutes per kilometer okay so if we now move across we'll turn on the, the heart rate data um, and then we'll look across now looking at the peaks you've got the red line is the uh, the heart rate data um, so let's have a look at that so 163 at a peak there on the third interval on the fourth 148 on the lowest 166 so what I've done is just gone through and tried to find try to pick off the lowest value on the graph for the heart rate data um, and then I've put these into a table which I'll bring up shortly so we can compare what they are but generally that, that trace is what I would expect to see roughly from a heart rate um, through an interval session and because it's coming from the because it's coming from the heart rate strap um, that's the one Everybody in all the companies and other people who test it say that's the most accurate, so we'll, we'll be using that one as the baseline. Okay, so now looking at the second trace, um, 
again so this trace is coming from the, the Garmin 645 watch and um, we can see a few parameters on the bottom as well the, the cadence the, the temperature uh, of the skin on my wrist um, that's all there but we're not really interested in that that's just something we're getting from the watch so we're now going to move to um, looking at the we'll turn on the heart rate data and we'll have a look at that incidentally you could see that the pace traces are very similar across the two um, so I'm quite happy with the GPS data that I'm getting back from both watches uh, the start of this on the on the, the Garmin 645 watch was a little bit funny in the first interval but I think it settled into it um, for the second, third and, all, and onwards from there on um, and again I've moved the cursor along and you can see looking at the here we are in the fourth interval 140 and 150 beats at the lower end and 165 I think that was at the top and then down 150 up to 165 so we've just gone along the trace and tried to pick for each interval session sorry for each interval um, what's the the lowest heart rate and the maximum heart rate um, because I think it'd be quite difficult to actually pick off every single heart rate for that okay so let's have a look at the, the heart rate data from the vivo smart 3 is now on the the bottom the garmin express application is pretty terrible for to actually read into the trace um and this so this is a print screen that I've, that's basically taken from the phone um it's very very difficult to read into the into the data that you've got there but so the heart rate for the average across the three devices was all the same um, and it varied by a few beats for the maximum however when you look at the the three traces so we're going to look at the red one for the heart rate strap that's very comparable to the the green one which is the Garmin 645 but then you look at the trace that we've got for the the Vivo Smart 3 on this particular occasion um, the data is not really that accurate to look at so what I, it's because we can't read the trace either um, I think we're just going to ignore that data and just compare the, the, the wristwatch, the Garmin wristwatch against the, the heart rate monitor. So all those results that I've managed to pick off the graphs off the Strava traces, um, I've put them into this little table here. So you've got down here, we did 10 intervals and I've called them lap one, two, three, all the way down to 10. And we've, we've recorded the low reading and the high reading for each lap. So the lowest reading on the chest heart rate monitor, chest heart rate heart HRM was 143 in lap one on the wristwatch that was 142 so the difference there was one beat um, so the chest strap was reading one beat higher than the, the wristwatch um, and then if you look at the same for the lap one you're looking at the high for the chest heart rate monitor which is 162 and then the wristwatch which is 159 um, and that gives you a difference of minus three in that case. So basically, what I'm saying minus because the the chest strap is the um, is what we think is the accurate one, and the wrist watch is it's trailing by three beats, so it's slightly behind there. So if you're looking down the numbers, the worst case is that the wrist watch is three beats out from the uh, from against the heart rate monitor. Um, and as we're getting into the third, it's actually getting more accurate, the fourth, fifth, and all the way down to the seventh. Um, it could be just coincidence, but it's becoming a lot more accurate in the middle part of the, the, uh, the, the training session. Okay, so from that, basically, I, I can see that if I'm using the wristwatch and I haven't got the chest strap with me, I'm expecting that my heart rate reading on the watch um, could be up to three beats. A minute out I know this is only one test that I've done and I might do some more in the future um, but generally on that on the generally on that data that I've got there I'd be quite happy to use the, the, the wristwatch on its own most of the time um, and expect that within a few beats um, I'm quite happy with the, the results and the data that I'm getting and um, so if I want to train by heart rate which is kind of what I do um, when I'm doing the aerobic runs um, well, actually, I use the heart rate data for, for all the runs, but uh, obviously when you're trying to keep within a, a, a certain band, 
um, I try to keep below um, something around about below 153, around about 150 beats per minute as my maximum for when I'm doing my aerobic runs. Um, and then obviously when I'm doing the more, the more anaerobic stuff like the interval training and the threshold runs, um, it's okay to obviously to, to get up there, but how, it's, it's nice to know that if you, you know, you're running at the top end of the fastest that you can run, um, if you think you're running at about 100 beat, 80 beats per minute, your watch is telling you you're doing that. So I think it's quite accurate. So I think in assessment overall, um, using the, the, the Garmin wristwatch for me is quite accurate, or I would say very accurate in comparison, comparison to the, uh, to the chest strap. And going forward, I don't think I'd have any problems in using the, uh, you know, the wristwatch and not having to take the chest strap, especially for, I don't know, for example, if you're going on, going away on holiday and you, if you're a bit like me, you, you do a bit of running when you go away. Um, it's one less thing to carry, one less thing you take in your suitcase, just take the watch and you don't need the chest strap. Um, but obviously if you, re you want really, really accurate data, then I suppose you'd have to go with the chest strap. So I think that's everything I've got to say on the, uh, the accuracy of the, the, the watch. Um, if, you've, if you've got any questions uh, about the, the training I've done and the data I've got or um, you just want to leave us a comment by all means drop a comment in there and, and, um, and I'll get back to you on that um, I hope the data presented and the analysis that I've done of it has been useful for you and uh, thanks for watching